astronaut ice cream is a lie. There was no astronaut ice cream for us. <laughs> the Mercedes Benz Interview Lounge. Haley, our snow is here. Uh, of course, you know, there are so many layers to your story, which I just find so fascinating, Haley. Not only the youngest American to ever go into orbit, but also here on the first day of uh, Physician Assistance Day. Yes, thank He's you. He's a physician assistant at one of our favorite places on Earth in Memphis, mm -hmm. of course, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I mean, you, you have like 25 different paragraphs about all the interesting things that make you so, so makes us want to talk to you. So now I've got dogs barking. So <laughs> where do we go from here? Thank you for being on with us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to join y'all. So uh, where do we start? First of all, what was the feeling like? sitting in the seat being strapped down and you know that you're almost at a point where there's probably a, not a lot of turning back you're going how did you feel yes and you know we were strapped in for about two and a half hours before liftoff and really everything i thought i was going to be feeling is not how i was feeling i i thought i'd be like almost terrified i thought i'd be nervous and um and in reality i was just so ready so excited. And I just kept saying over and over, let's do this. Wow. I, I imagine that there's, there's something that we can all learn from this experience where sometimes you just have to trust that there are people who know what they're doing and you just have to sit back, submit, and just, <laughs> and know that they are so great at what they're doing. You're going to be safe and you're going to have you're going to have a moment to remember for the rest of your life. I, I yeah, imagine it, it did take trust, but that trust was built over months and months. Since the first time I went to SpaceX in January, I knew that I was in really good hands. And then we trained and we were all really ready. And I trusted my crew members and, uh, and we had an incredible mission. So let's talk about uh, the mission you've been on your entire life. I mean, as a young girl, you were actually where you work now and are, are doing great things. You were actually a patient and your family was deeply, deeply uh, enhanced by the men and women at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Talk about that and how it connects you to what you did with SpaceX. When I was 10 years old, I was diagnosed with bone cancer in my leg and getting that diagnosis was the scariest moment of my life. Um, I was just I was just so worried I was going to die. And a few days later, I was walking in the doors of St. Jude and I felt hope. I felt like I was going to be OK. And I spent a year at St. Jude. I underwent some really intense chemo and I also had surgery to save my leg, which ultimately saved my life. And, um, and during that year, you know, I had so such expensive treatment. It was cutting edge and my family never received a bill, not for the treatment, the, wow. the year of housing that we spent in Memphis, our transportation or our food, everything was taken care of. So all my parents had to worry about was just getting me better. And that year at St. Jude was the most important year of my life. And I loved it here. And so since I was 10 years old, I've been telling anyone that I'm going to grow up and work at St. Jude. And then wow. about a year and a half ago, I got my dream job as a PA and I work with inpatient leukemia and lymphoma patients. Um, and wow. I, I really have the greatest job of all time. And, and now that I can see St. Jude on the other side, on the healthcare provider side, I see that the care that we give these patients is, is unlike anywhere else. And we're able to treat these kids without having to worry about what insurance will cover. And we never send these families a bill. And St. Jude has such a global impact to help kids all over the world. Um, and it's just absolutely incredible. And through this Inspiration4 mission, we've been able to raise over $200 million for St. Jude. And wow. the fundraising continues. Wow. <laughs> it's incredible. It really it's is. Awesome. And, you know, and, and, and by the way, if you're just turning us on, Haley Arsenault is here. And of course, she's taking us back to when she first uh, first learned about St. Jude and then a patient there now working there as a PA. And, you know, a lot of kids say they want to grow up and be an astronaut, but you, you wanted to grow up to work at St. Jude and became an astronaut in a way. So, I, mean, I know. How crazy is that? A lot of dreams I, come I'm still so wrapping my head around it. Yes. Um, I, uh, it's exactly right. All I've ever wanted to do is work at St. Jude. And so when I got this phone call in January, out of the blue, asking if I wanted to go to space, I was shocked. But I mean, immediately I said, yes, you say yes to these kind of things. Yes, and, you do. Uh, yeah. And it's just been the most incredible experience. So I know that you said you went through some intense chemotherapy when you were a kid and you were fighting cancer, but I know you guys also have to go through intense training when you're getting ready to go into space. What was the toughest part about that? Or was it even tough for you at all? 
No, it's so true. The training was intense. We had about six months of training and probably what we did the most was studying. We were given PowerPoints on PowerPoints of academics, and we really learned the ins and outs of our spacecraft and and the orbital mechanics behind it and how all of this would work. Um, but the most intense part of training was we actually, the four of us climbed a mountain together. We, as part of um, one of our first training activities, it was a crew bonding activity. We climbed Mount Rainier and it was nine and a half hours of walking through the snow, going straight up. And, um, you know, there were a few moments that I really thought, can I do this? But we pushed through together. And that was the first moment that really bonded us. And we've just been such a close crew ever since then. God, wow. That's so cool. <laughs> I love the fact that you have taken the picture of when you had cancer and you're always like holding it and showing it because I feel like the kids that are going through maybe what you went through and they see you now have so much hope in their hearts. And it made me, it made me tear up every time I see a picture of that. I, I agree, Daniel. And you know what? Ugh. Training for gosh, I, I would think that there's a lot of parallels between fighting cancer and training to go into orbit. Did it get you ready? Does this, for any kid who's listening right now going through cancer, is it preparing them for some greater, wonderful, wonderful things in life that it, are waiting for them? It's preparing them in the most beautiful way. And I share the same thing with my patients that having cancer is going to make them who they are and they're going to be stronger because of it. And having cancer absolutely gave me such a love for life. And I think that love for life is what ultimately led me to saying yes to this phone call to go to space. But having cancer also made me brave and just made me appreciate every day. Wow. wow. What was the, what was the splashdown like when you guys actually landed? Were you nervous about the splashdown? Was it exactly, did it go the way you thought it would go? I was, a, I was a little nervous for Splashdown because we had done training to accustom ourselves with the G-forces that we would feel for launch and reentry, but there was no way that we could train for the actual Splashdown. And, um, and for those who aren't familiar, our capsule that we were, we were orbiting in um, literally splashes down into the ocean, and that's how we land under parachutes. And, um, and it was fine, though. We just, you know, we kind of braced ourselves and and we landed in the water and then we, we feel and hear this big tidal wave after we land, but we can't see it because at that point, our windows are all fogged from the atmosphere. Um, but then we were just so happy in that moment because we knew that we were home safe and that we had completed the most beautiful mission. Wow. 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 That's well, so cool. the, 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 I'm sure people have looked at you and said, I want to corner you and just have you by myself and talk to you about this for the next five hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah, and you understand our, our curiosity. I mean, if, if you were in our position talking to someone who went through you, what you've been through, what, what is an angle that hasn't been covered that you really find fascinating about this entire experience for you? From, from being a kid all the way to splashing down in the ocean from coming from a, uh, from a orbit? You know, I think kids and adults just want to hear about the human aspects of going to space. Like, what do you eat and how do you sleep and, and all of that? And, um, and so for me, that's one of the most fun things to share. Like, I ate cold pizza in space and bacon, and, um, <laughs> and we, we threw it at each other. Like, we spent probably the majority of our meal time just like throwing food at each other and try not to fight. lose it. <laughs> Wait. A, a food fight in outer space. Okay. You don't eat that crunchy ice cream, you know, that packaged crunchy ice cream that we can get okay. down here. Astronaut ice cream is a lie. There was no astronaut ice cream for us. <laughs> that was one of my first questions too, because we tried all our space food on earth before we brought it to space to make sure we liked it. And I was looking around, they had all these options and I said, okay, well, where's the astronaut ice cream? But no, not, not a thing. <laughs> Just for the Good. Earth Good for you. <laughs> Absolutely. So look, you know, I, we, we were talking about you guys before you even took off. And I know it, the, the, the mission was delayed and then it was brought back to regular time. I don't know. So we, we lost track. Then I, and Gandhi said, I know they're already up there. I went, no, they're not supposed to leave till Wednesday. <laughs> oh, they're there. I'm like, oh, damn it. I so know. <laughs> we, we were trying to get Haley on with us. And, and for so many reasons, I'm so glad you spent time with us. And But there are many takeaways from this conversation and this time we've had with you. First of all, the headline, of course, I must say St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. You know, I, I've taken several visits. I've done several visits there and to see yes. the miracles that they're pulling off there every single day. And the fact that these kids and their families are so well taken care of without spending a dime out of their mm -hmm. pockets. That's why whenever anyone listening has a chance to to learn more and 
actually actually donate or or contribute to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, please do. And to see how this is such a personal thing for you, you're definitely showing us the human the human aspect of this because it, I don't know. Yeah, it, I mean, who I'm reading the text messages. Everyone's like, oh, my God, this interview is giving me chills. Oh, I, I cannot wait to donate to St. Jude. I mean, it it's, makes me it's, so happy. Well, then that's why you're 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 doing the tour. You're you're doing yes. the talk. And what's it like going to outer space with a billionaire? Talk, let's talk about that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because I almost like I forget that he's a billionaire because he's just my friend at this point. Um, Jared Isaacman is uh, the beneficiary of this mission who also donated one hundred million dollars to St. Jude. <laughs> and Good for him. And he he just he just has so much passion for wanting to solve childhood cancer. And, you know, I feel the same way. And so that bonded us quickly. And then the four of us just had an incredible time in space together. And, you know, this this family that we formed is really going to be lifelong. Haley, uh, first of all, uh, and also happy uh, physician assistance week. Uh, I know you. that a lot of, a lot of PAs. That. Like I said before, a lot of PAs out there, you are the rock star because you are just a shining example of what everyone wants to be and, and and what you're doing with your life is so fascinating. Is there any way we can keep up with you and your yes. journey? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm on social media on Instagram and Twitter and, uh, and I love sharing my journey. I've been sharing a bunch of photos from space and then I'm, I'm going to be going back to my job at St. Jude and want to continue telling those stories too. Um, you know, that's, that's ultimately my purpose in life is working with these kids and brings me so much joy. You're going to ask her Gandhi. Oh yeah. Are you going back to space? I don't know if I'll be invited back, but I, I, I would imagine I would say yes in a heartbeat. But at the same time, I really want other people to experience it. Like there have been less than oh. 70 women who have been to space and it, that number needs to change. And I think it really will. You know, our mission was the first step in, in more and more regular people going to space. Wow. You ask, you ask a room full of people, who wants to go to outer space? And half of them say, no way. They say go. no way or they say absolutely yes. Yeah, yep. some of us yeah. Are, I'm a hell yeah, too. Oh, by the way, uh, <laughs> some of your sisters from your sorority are checking in uh, to awesome. say hi. And which sorority were you in? Alpha Sigma Tau. So hey to all the ASTs out there. They're listening. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Haley Arsenault, of course, with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and from galaxies far away. It's been great talking to you today. Thank you so much. This was such a pleasure. Thank you, guys. All right. You have a great day. Keep, keep getting the word out. Fascinating. Thank, Thank you. you. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge.